Today on Monkey Life, rescued marmoset Amy has her day in court, and it's good news. So that's it. She now belongs to Monkey World and is part of the family. Elderly, golden-cheeked gibbon Alex causes concern. Um, we can probably wake her up if you're happy with the bloods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to give me the antiparamazole? And the chase is on after a sweet treat for the squirrel monkeys. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. Now we just have to get them loaded up in the van and we're back to Dorset, so, so far, so good. The park provides a home for more than 250 monkeys and apes from 22 different species. Today is a big day for the Monkey World team. Alison is in court to testify on behalf of Amy, a young marmoset victim of the pet trade discovered in appalling conditions. Alison has been called as an expert witness to help the court decide whether Amy can live the rest of her life at the park or be returned to her previous owner, who's been accused of neglecting her. It's eight months since Alison rescued the marmoset from a house in North London, following a police raid. Despite her desperate beginnings, it didn't take long for this little marmoset to find happiness at Monkey World, with adopted family Milo, Clyde, and young Caesar. The thought of this new life being snatched away from her is unthinkable for the team. After a morning of deliberation, the magistrate has made a decision. Finally, round two and it's all done, which I'm so pleased about. So, um, the previous owner of Amy the Marmoset Monkey has been found guilty of neglect and failing to provide a suitable and adequate environment for her. Um, the magistrate went so far to point out that it was probably the luckiest day of her life when Monkey World appeared in her life to give her back what she deserves as a marmoset monkey. So that's a family of her own kind. So we're really pleased now, mainly for Amy, and that there won't be anything more and we can draw a line under it. So that's it. She now belongs to Monkey World and is part of the family. It's great news. But this is a situation Alison knows will keep occurring. The laws governing the trade in exotic primates as pets in Britain today are letting everybody down the monkeys, all of us who try and support and rescue them, and the police force. It's, it's a no-win for anybody other than the breeders and dealers that are making a ton of money. It's a tragedy. With Amy's future decided by the court, back at the park, the oblivious young marmoset is in for a treat. Primate care member Hannah has prepared a special enrichment for the group. Toys smeared in jam and small coloured buttons strung up concealing raisins. She hangs them in the outside enclosure, where the marmoset family will have to work out the best way to reach the treats. Go on, guys! Amy leads the group out, showing just how safe and confident she feels in her new home. Her attention is immediately drawn to the brightly coloured buttons and the raisins hidden between them. Caesar makes a beeline for the larger toy, demonstrating good core strength as he pulls it up to lick off the sticky treat. While father figure of the group, Milo, shows how quickly he can access the treats hidden in the buttons. The entire group gets stuck in demonstrating how nimble and clever they are, using their limbs and tails to balance from all angles. And Amy is certainly making the most of this new start in life. She's a boisterous youngster who loves playing and is interested in everything around her. She's totally at home with her new family, especially young Caesar. 
The pair often play together, giving adoptive parents Milo and Clyde a well-deserved break. It's a far cry from the small indoor birdcage she was living in less than a year ago. Now she has the correct diet, lots of stimulation, and plenty of indoor and outdoor space. It all makes for a healthy, happy marmoset with her whole life ahead of her. Amy's not the only primate whose life has taken a dramatic turn for the better since coming to Monkey World in recent months. Three common squirrel monkeys, rescued from appalling conditions at a house in Somerset, are also new to the park. Logan is the largest of the group, a big male who seems to be in charge. Then there's Lucille, a small adult female whose shyness could be down to her traumatic past. And finally, young male Lopez. He's blind in his right eye, but it doesn't hold him back. He has heaps of energy. The trio have literally come on leaps and bounds since arriving at the park. We're really pleased with how these guys are doing now. Obviously, when they came in, they weren't in the best of condition. They were all underweight. So it's really, really lovely that we've seen so much progression over the last sort of few weeks and months and how much they've come on in their confidence and in their condition and everything. Today, Steph is giving the trio a seasonal form of enrichment. Tasty and ripe grapes on the vine. But she doesn't want to make it too easy for them. Squirrel monkeys are quite high energy and they're always active, they're always busy, they're always doing stuff. Um, but particularly this, this group that we've been doing right now, we've got Lopez in here. Um, he's quite a young boy still, so he is really, really playful. Anything new, anything novel, he loves just chucking it around the enclosure. And yeah, he's he's really, really playful boy, so I think he'll have a lot of fun with these. All three squirrel monkeys head straight outside, but initially, when confronted with all the tasty fruit, they're a little unsure. It's left to Logan to take the initiative. Shy and timid Lucille is still uncertain. She does have a sniff, but isn't impressed. Lopez, meanwhile, is treating the grapevines as his new favourite toy acrobatically juggling with them on the hoses and eventually taking the chance to eat a giant green grape. Lucille is still wary. She eyes up some new toys stuffed with grapes, but is not confident enough to have a go, so leaves them for the others. Lopez, on the other hand, is in grape heaven. With so many on offer, he's constantly on the move demonstrating his impressive gymnastic prowess as he grabs as many as he can. Logan, meanwhile, watches on, trying to keep out of the way, for now. The tactic fails as youngster Lopez, energised by the sweet treats, runs riot around the enclosure. Logan gets caught up in his antics and is chased from corner to corner. Lopez is fantastic. He's a really funny kind of monkey. He's got that naughty teenager kind of aspect to him. Um, he just flies into things, you know, jumps first, asks questions later. Basically just sort of, you know, throwing his weight around like a, like a teenage boy. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a, lot of, a lot of fun to watch. It's a great result. The three squirrel monkeys have started to embrace their new life at the park and are settling in. What's more, they've been formally handed over to Monkey World by their previous owner. So to everyone's delight, they're here to stay. It's moving day for four of the park's golden-cheeked gibbons. Devoted couple Jake and Zoe are returning to their newly revamped previous enclosure. While the two bachelor boys, Zach and Tio, are moving in the opposite direction. The catalyst for the move was a bit of friction between the two young males, Zach and Tio. They were bosom buddies for a while, but they're growing up and, as adolescents, both want the dominant position, which has led to a few minor conflicts. The care team have decided the young males need some time out before the situation escalates further. 
what we're actually going to do is we're going to take them to the main Gibbon house and this allows us to be able to give both of them their individual space and then they can either spend time together or we can easily shut them separate and allow them to have their own safe zones. Um, so to facilitate that, we're actually going to bring um, Jake and Zoe back from the main house to the top house here um, and they're going to live together in the space that used to be their home but has had a few improvements since they were last here. Getting four gibbons into boxes can be tricky, but to minimise the stress, the team have spent several weeks crate training with them. And it's really paid off. Both Zoe and Jake waste no time going into their boxes. At the other end of the park, Tio has also gone easily into his, but Zach is proving to be a bit more stubborn. Hey, buddy, come on. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Go, boy. Right, go, boys. Go, go, go. Go, boy. Go, boy. Yay. It's all right. It's all right. Hey, buddy. The tricky part of today's move is complete. The Gibbons have responded well to their training. They're all in the boxes. Um, obviously, a few issues with Zach's box, um, but he's in and he's fine. Um, Jake and Zoe were really, really good. Both went in fairly calmly. Um, Zoe, I was worried she was going to sit between the slides, but she just kind of went, eh, and moved straight in. So i um, really happy. Everybody's in the boxes, so now we've just got to get them out at the other ends. The team are going to release Zach and Tio into their new bedrooms first. Although they'll be separated, they'll still be able to see each other through the mesh. Later, if they seem to be getting along, they'll be the option to spend time together. Yeah, the boys are good. They're, they're out their boxes. They're in their new rooms. A little bit um, confused as to what's actually going on. Um, just took us a little while to just change the boxes around, get them all strapped up. But yeah, all good so far. So now we just got to get these two out. Next, it's Jake and Zoe's turn to be released. Jake is first. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Can you let him straight through to the playroom? Jake's lived here before and wastes no time heading straight inside, comfortable in the familiar surroundings. While he settles in, the team transport his partner Zoe to join him. Are we good? Safe. All right. Yeah. Ready? Come on then, Zozo. Yeah. Go. Welcome home, Zo. Yeah, well done. Like Jake, she instantly recognises the old Gibbon house, doesn't hesitate, and is greeted by her partner. This is obviously a familiar environment for Jake and Zoe because they lived here for a number of years, so they're coming home, really. Um, but I think the fact that the team managed to set up such a clever way of crate training them up at the, the main given house has meant this morning's been really calm um, and none of the animals seem stressed. So that's the advantage of, of putting the time in to do the training. So, yeah, really pleased with how it's gone, really impressed with the organisation of the Gibbon team. Um, and nice for Jake and Zoe to come back home. They may be back in their old house, but the outdoor enclosure is very different from when they last saw it. The team wastes no time in letting them explore. And for this pair, it's like they've never been away. Another gibbon, however, has been giving the care team cause for concern. Elderly female Alex. Alex has been at the park for almost 18 years. She was rescued from Taiwan in 2000 and is estimated to be at least 30 years old. She lost her arm play fighting with another gibbon, but recovered well and has always been healthy and active. Over the last few months, staff have noticed Alex starting to show some unusual symptoms. She's actually drinking her own urine. Um, she's eating really everything that's in sight, but she's actually been losing weight um, quite consistently over the last few months. And obviously we've been doing regular urine samples on her and each time it is presenting quite high with glucose, um, which does indicate that there is something wrong with her. The team called in wildlife vet John Lewis. He gave Alex a thorough examination, checking her teeth and heart before taking blood samples to send to the laboratory. Um, we can probably wake her up if you're happy with the bloods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
You want to give me the antipans on? Two weeks later, the results came back, revealing Alex had diabetes. It's the first time the team has had to deal with this with one of their gibbons. But they're relieved to have an answer and a treatment plan. It's actually quite a simple thing for us to treat. We um, get started Alex on a medication called metformin. Um, and basically what this does is it helps the body to actually utilize the, the sugar and the glucose that's in her body. Um, and this way she doesn't end up with an excess of it that she's actually passing out and it should hopefully make her feel a lot better. It'll mean a bit of trial and error to regulate Alex's condition. But for now, Kat is spending a little more time mixing her meals with medication. Today, for breakfast, is one of Alex's favourite treats. So what I'm just doing now is I'm just making up some oats mixed with some yoghurt. Um, now, this is something that the, the Gibbons absolutely love. And what I'm actually going to do with this one is I'm going to add Alex's daily dose of metformin and then I'm going to give her that um, before we let her out for the day. Two weeks later, and the team are already noticing some positive changes. So far, we are seeing that there's a, a decrease in how much water she's actually drinking every day, which is something that you would expect to see um, with the high glucose levels, you do see an excessive thirst, so that's actually bringing it down. Um, we have just done a new um, urine sample test, which is obviously what we've been doing, monitoring her glucose levels some, for some time, and we've seen that dramatically drop for the first time in, in, in all the time we've been testing it. So again, that's a really good sign that this medication is helping her, um, and that will be making her feel a lot better physically as well. Although it's likely Alex will be on medication for the rest of her life, her close relationship with the staff means it should be easy to monitor her and for her regime to be adjusted when necessary. The team have everything crossed this much-loved character will be able to continue to live a normal, happy life. It's a beautiful spring day. And over at Paolo's Pond Woolies, the group are about to get a seasonal treat. Freshly picked camellia flowers still on the branch. We're just trying to give them something a bit fun and a bit different. So we're filling up some tub trugs with some bright flowers, uh, also putting a few treats kind of sprinkled around it. And the plan is to hopefully float them out on their pond. So they kind of have to work a little bit to get the stuff out of it. They hopefully can dangle down and suspension feed from them and, um, yeah, just playing around and doing something a bit different. The group have been living together since the big woolly move nine months ago. And during that time, their enclosure has had a fantastic revamp with an extra high climbing frame, long drop-down hoses for them to swing on, ladders to walk across, and plenty of natural planting to forage in. Today's enrichment is designed to encourage the group to use their new equipment, especially the hoses, they can suspend themselves from these using their magnificent prehensile tails while grabbing hard-to-reach objects. There are five members in this group, dominant male Paolo and Enzo, just a couple of years younger. Then there's Pakaya's small family. Her three-year-old daughter, Oriana, and son, Claude, who's just 18 months. All five come straight out and are immediately drawn to the colourful tubs with the camellia flowers and grapes inside them. It's Paolo who makes the first move, acrobatically hanging from the newly installed hoses, with his feet and tail as an anchor, while he reaches down with both hands. He discards the camellia flowers in favour of the more familiar grapes hiding underneath. Oriana has been watching Paolo closely. Using just her tail as a support, she tries to grab a flower. They're tantalizingly close, but even at full stretch, she can't quite manage to hold on to one. Enzo takes the easy option. He snaffles a camellia brows and shows a taste for the pink flowers. Paolo's going in for seconds with his normal gung-ho, quick-as-you-can approach. The prehensile tail on a woolly monkey is incredibly strong, enabling them to support their whole body weight and more. 
In the wild, they very rarely come down from the trees for fear of ground-dwelling predators. Their tail can be used as a climbing aid and also enables them to feed underneath the branches where other monkeys can't reach. It's obviously helped Pakaya grab a handful of flowers, while her children, Claude and Oriana, are eating at the water's edge. Pakaya's got a really lovely family group. She's a very protective um, mother. Um, so the three of them kind of go around together. Claude's starting to be a little independent boy and he does like to go off and explore on his own but never strays too far from mum. Um, and then Oriana, she's obviously a little bit older but again, she's got quite a close, tight relationship with mum so she likes to hang around with her. The group have come together well, despite including two strong, large males. Obviously, Paolo's the bigger... Uh, the more dominant male of the two. Um, Enzo's a pretty big lad as well, though, um, and the two of them have kind of got a little bit of an understanding between each other. Um, Enzo is lower ranking and he is being respectful to Paolo. He's giving him his space, he's staying out of his way and just kind of the two of them coexist around each other but without kind of getting in each other's faces too much. Um, but it works quite well. Enzo's got quite a nice relationship with Bacaya's family. Um, so he spends a lot of time hanging around with them while Paolo's kind of off um, patrolling, showing off and being the kind of goon that he is. And in typical Paolo style, he saves his most dramatic move until last. Next time on Monkey Life, it's dental day for Lima Houdini. I thought it was to do with the canine, but I'm starting to change my mind. It might be to do with one of the, the cheek teeth. And a new baby woolly is named.